today let us talk about gravitation potential energy let us first define what is what do we mean by gravitational potential energy it is the work done in bringing a body from infinity to the point against gravity field or you can say that is the work done in bringing a body from infinite to the point that is under the influence of gravitational field let us say let us consider this to be earth radius of earth p r let this be this be infinite consider a point a that is on the surface of earth consider any arbitrary point b at a distance r1 from center consider any arbitrary point c and its distance from the center of earth r2 now the force that is acting on body mass m let let us consider a body of mass m so force acting on body of small mass m will be g m m divided by r squared let us suppose we have taken this body up to point b so force acting will be g m m divided by r1 squared now let us talk about the average force that is f average it will be the geometric mean of the forces acting of a and b and geometric mean of any two numbers that is let us consider a and b will be root of square root of ab so if i am considering the geometric mean of any two forces it will be root over f a into f b so substituting the values i get here that is g m m divided by r squared multiply by g m m divided by r1 squared solving this we get g m m by r1 r now this is the average force acting on a particle now what will be let us talk about the work done work done by a force is equal to dot product of force and the displacement so i can write here average work to be f average dot displacement let us say this displacement is s we have already calculated average gravitational force that is gmm r1 r and let us say i have displaced this body from r to r1 so the effective displacement of it will be r1 minus r on simplification we can write it as g m m divided by and by r minus similarly if i am displacing my body from point b to c i'll be getting g m m divided by 1 by r 1 minus 1 by r let us talk about work done in moving a body of mass m from point c to d it will be g m m by 1 by r 2 minus 1 by r 3 let us say r point d as a distance of r 3 from the center of earth adding it i can get work done ab plus work done in bc plus work done cd 
I'll be writing. So ultimately, I'll be getting G M M divided by one by R minus one by R one plus one by R one minus one by R two. And if I go on and on up to infinite, I'll be getting one upon infinity because my last I'm considering the distance from the center to be infinite. Henceforth, all these terms other than one by r and one by infinity will be cut down, and I'll be getting an expression that is g m m one by r minus. One by infinity, and from mathematics, we know one by infinite is zero. Substituting it, I'll be getting g m m by r. Now, this was the work done in taking a body of mass m from the surface of Earth to infinite. Now. The work done from bringing a body from infinite to that point will be minus g m m by r. That is the work done in bringing a body from infinite to a point inside gravitational. P, and this was the work done in bringing a body from surface Earth to infinite. So I'll be writing it to be minus g m m by r. This work done gets stored as the potential energy. It is similarly similar. It, this case is similar. To what we have studied earlier, that is, if we take a ball of mass m up to a height, then its potential energy increases by m g h. Similarly, here also, if work is done, then it is it gets stored in the body's potential energy. So I can write potential energy to be equivalent to g m m. Divided by R. If let us say I am bringing up to a height h, then my potential energy will become g m m by R plus h. Next, let us talk about gravitational potential. Gravitational potential can be defined as work done per unit mass in bringing body from infinite to any point inside the gravitational potential. Sorry, inside the gravitational field. So I can define that that is v to be that is gravitational potential that is work done in bringing A unit mass from infinite to any point. Above we have calculated work done to be minus g m m by r for per unit mass divided by mass m. On solving, I'll be getting g m. So this is the expression for gravitational potential. At any point, that is minus g m by r. Next, let us talk about orbital velocity. This is the velocity with which any satellite orbits around Earth, or you can say about any fixed point. Let us consider. Earth to be mass m, and let us say at any radius r, a satellite 
is having circular motion velocity at any point will be tangential that is v let us say the mass of the object having orbit is small m i can write it as g m m by r square that is the gravitational force that will be acting on the body by the virtue of mass m this gravitational force will be providing the necessary centripetal acceleration to this body of mass m to have its circular motion so i'll be multiplying m with its acceleration acceleration here will be v square by r that is the formula for centripetal acceleration this is actually centripetal acceleration simplifying it i can write it as v that is orbital to be root over g m divided by r now let us analyze what this formula wants to say v orbital is independent of the mass of the body whether the mass here is a heavier one or here the mass is a lighter one it makes no sense when it comes to the calculation of orbital velocity it is independent of the mass of the body which is in orbits it depends only of the mass that is concentrated at the center let us say if planets are going moving around earth then the mass earth is taken into consideration v orbital depends on the orbital radius greater the orbital radius lesser will be the orbital velocity and lesser the orbital radius more will be its orbital velocity next in this segment let us talk about escape velocity escape velocity is the minimum velocity which is required so as to reach infinite or you can say the minimum velocity with which a body to be projected so it can overcome the gravitational attraction of the earth that is minimum velocity required to reach infinite or to overcome earth gravity so by the conservation of energy that is mechanical energy at the surface of earth will be equal to mechanical energy at infinite now that is mechanical energy that is potential energy plus kinetic energy at surface of earth should be equal to the potential energy plus kinetic energy at infinite potential energy at the surface of earth is g m m by r plus kinetic energy let us say the mass of the body will be m and kinetic energy will be m half m v e squared now this is at the surface potential energy at infinite g m m now my radius will become infinite plus kinetic energy it is that minimum velocity so i am assuming that as the body reaches infinite it will be reaching it with zero velocity so i will be substituting on velocity part to be zero on solving it on lhs i get uh, and gmm by infinite will be zero because anything divided by infinite is zero and half m zero squared is also zero 
So equating it, I get G M M divided by R to be half M V squared. I can crisscross M on both sides. Solving it, I'll be getting it to be 2 G M divided by R. Now this expression can be further simplified to 2 I am multiplying and dividing by R on both sides. So I can further write it as 2 G M by R squared into R and G M by R square is G times the radius of R. If I substitute the values of G and R where G is the acceleration due to gravity and R is radius of earth. I will be getting it 11.2 kilometers second. So it is that minimum velocity that is 11.2 kilometer per second is the minimum velocity with which body should be projected so that it overcomes the influence earth's gravitational pull. One more interesting thing is this that VE can be further simplified as root 2 V naught that is escape velocity is root 2 times of V orbital velocity. Orbital velocity we have already calculated to be root under root of gm by r. So this is another expression of escape velocity in terms of orbital velocity. Let us further talk about the now let us talk about total energy of a satellite that is let a satellite of mass m is revolving around the earth in circular orbit of radius r let us say this is its orbit and its radius is r and let us say this is satellite of mass m. So kinetic energy will be half m v orbital velocity squared that is half of m and we have calculated the orbital velocity to be g m by r. Let us say consider this to be R. So I can write it as half G M M divided by R where R is the distance of the satellite from the earth, center of the earth. Potential energy of a satellite can be written as minus g m m by r and if I wish to calculate total energy I will be writing as sum of potential energy plus kinetic energy that is half of minus g m m by r with its potential energy and half of G M M by R is its kinetic energy that comes out to be G M M by 2 R. So this is the total energy of a satellite. Next is binding energy. Binding energy is amount of energy which on giving to a body makes the body escape from its orbit. And let us say if the we have calculated that the total energy of a satellite in orbit to be minus g m m by 2 r that is binding energy. Total energy of a satellite in 
of it was given by the expression gmm by 2r and if i wish to make it make this satellite escape from its orbit then at infinite its energy total energy should be zero so to make this energy at infinite to be zero i'll be adding plus of half g m m by r to it to make this energy to be zero so this energy which when given makes the satellite escapes from the orbit is called as binding energy here yeah. binding energy is let us abbreviate is be that is half of g mm by r half of g mm by r if i give this much energy to this we can get this object to escape from it further talk about kepler laws of planetary motion let us first say the law of orbits law of orbit says that all the planets move in elliptical orbits with sun at its focus let us say this is an ellipse with this to be its major axis and this this to be its major axis and this one is minor axis the sun at its one of its focus let us see these are the two planets this to be its semi major axis and this to be minor axis let us talk about kepler's law of planetary motion it says that the law of orbits that is all planets move in elliptical orbits around sun with sun at its focus that is that is say at any focus that is that is this point the satellite will moving in elliptical path with sun at its one of the focus next is law of aerial velocity that is let us say we are we are having a satellite at position a and we are having a satellite at position c at any time instant let us say time interval t this satellite has come to a point b and this satellite has come to a point d so the line that connects the planet to the sun will sweep out equal areas in equal intervals of time so i can write it here as area aob is equal to ocd next law that is governed by kepler was law of time period that is the square of the time period of revolution of any planet is proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of the orbit 